And when you're ready, let's come to a seated position on your mat or on the floor, wherever feels comfortable to you. And just begin to deepen your breath. Gently close your eyes if that feels comfortable. And just acknowledging that maybe today was a day where you rushed around and even rushed to get here. And if that's the case, just be extra gentle with yourself and slow your breath down even more. We'll start our class as we always do with three unifying breaths together in through the nose and out through the mouth. For our first deep inhale into the nose, Open your mouth and exhale out. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out. And for that final breath, even juicier, even bigger, deep breath in. And open the mouth, exhale out. And we'll begin our practice by moving into child's pose. Coming into all fours on your mat. Bring your big toes to touch. And bring your knees as wide as you'd like to. Maybe as wide as the outer edges of your mat. And then gently begin to sink your hips towards your heels. Stretching your arms out long in front of you. Feeling that nice stretch in your shoulders and gently bring your forehead to rest on the earth. I always tell y'all this is my favorite pose. <laughs> I often begin my practice here because it just feels like surrendering to what the day was and surrendering to what this practice is about to be. So while you're here, just imagine that the four edges of your mat or the floor or a towel, whatever you're on, is protecting you. It's your safe space. So whatever happened before the practice, whatever you got going on after it, it's irrelevant to what is on this mat right now. And as you continue to breathe into your body, set an intention for your practice today. Maybe it's remembering to breathe and giving yourself even deeper, sweeter breaths or limiting judgment of yourself as you practice today. From here, gently begin to lift your hips up. We'll move to Anahata or melting heart pose together. With your hips above your knees, slowly begin to lower your chest towards the mat, your arms out in front of you. 
And if you feel any pressure on your knees here, you can double up your mat or a towel and slide it on underneath. And as you continue to breathe, maybe you make tiny adjustments to make it an even more deep opening pose for you. Maybe make a pillow with your arms to rest your head on or open your knees even wider. Just remembering to be gentle on your body while also pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Always remembering that balance. Gently and slowly begin to bring yourself back up onto all fours, on your palms and your knees. And just gently feel out what your body needs. Sometimes I just need to get the wiggles out. You can move back and forth. And when you're ready, find stillness and we'll move into some cat cows. So we'll drop our bellies and lift our necks and our gazes up to the ceiling. And on the exhale, bring your chin to your chest. Just continue to take those, drop your belly, gaze up, and then chin to chest. And this just doesn't have to be back and forth either. You can Add a little something here, maybe go side to side, get some circles in, just continuing to open your body. This is a moment where I'm always glad I have my headphones in because if you heard the cracks and the pops <laughs> as I do some of these moves, you wouldn't believe it. If you're just like me, just laugh at yourself. Don't even judge it. Do two more on your own and then find stillness in tabletop position. And when you get there, 
gently begin to lower your body all the way down onto the mat, belly flop. And then bring your arms out in front of you, almost like the number 11. So your forearms are in front of you, palms down. And your gaze is either in front of you or up ahead for Sphinx pose. Gently lower yourself all the way down and rest your left cheek onto the floor, gazing over to your right side. And gently lift your right leg off of the ground And bring your right arm to meet your right leg. And it's okay if it doesn't reach for it or grab it. Just even that moment or that movement of opening your chest and your shoulders is more than enough. Lower your leg back down and bring your arm back alongside your face and turn over to your right cheek. And lift your left leg up. Remove your left arm around the sole of your feet. Maybe you didn't get there on the other side and you're able to on this side. Just remembering that every side is different.
lower your leg back down onto the ground. And take any wiggles or any movement in your body that feels good from here. And we'll gently press ourselves back up onto all fours. And lift your right leg up and place it between your left and your right palm for crescent lunge. Again, this is a pose where it might feel like a bit much on the knees, so double up on your mat if you need to. You want this to feel comfortable. You can either stay here, or as you continue to deepen the breath, maybe you feel space for something else or something new. And if you do, you can lower your forearms down to the earth. Maybe even rest the head onto the earth. From here, we'll move to half pigeon pose. Gently rotate your right leg to where it's horizontal to the mat. And gently have your left leg straight out behind you. If this is your first time in the pose, know that you are not alone sometimes in feeling like I wanna immediately get out of this. From wherever you are, make those tiny adjustments for it to be comfortable and then gently surrender yourself down to the earth.
Remembering to breathe. Maybe even counting your breath to remind yourself this is not a forever pose. You're not here forever. Yogi's choice, however you'd like to get there, to switch out your legs. So I like to come all the way back to tabletop and just wiggle out my body. <laughs> however you'd like to get there, with your left leg out in front of you and your right behind you. Whenever I'm here, I always think about the language of yoga known as Sanskrit and how one of the words that defines this pose means royalty. And so if you evoke that royal energy in this pose, to me being royal means knowing when to surrender, when to be open to change, open to new, so whatever that means for you, keep that in your mind as you continue to breathe into the pose. Wherever you are, gently begin to come out of the pose.
and move to crescent lunge, bringing your left foot next to the palm and your right foot is bent behind you. You can either stay here or again, moving your forearms down to the earth, maybe even your forehead. Each side doesn't have to match, so whatever feels good. Gently bring your left leg back to meet the right. And then move to a position where you're seated and your legs are out in front of you. And gently scoop out your split bones. Give yourself a compliment while you're there about how Nice your booty is. And then inhale your arms up overhead. And on your exhale, gently begin to lower your chest towards your legs. And your arms can go anywhere on the mat or if you'd like to grab your feet your ankles. As you continue to nourish your body with those deep breaths, just imagine that every breath allows you to lower your body even more to the earth.
On your next inhale, gently use your fingertips to walk yourself back up into that seated position. And open your legs out wide in front of you, as wide as they can go. And then gently bring them in maybe an inch closer together. And this is Yogi's choice again. As you inhale your arms up overhead, you can either gently rotate yourself towards your legs as you lower your chest down or into the middle of your legs. Whatever feels is most natural to you. And gently place your fingertips down on the earth and use them to walk yourself back up into a seated position. Bring your feet in close together and roll down onto your back. Bring the soles of your feet together, bent knees, or butterfly pose, or supta baddha konasana. And it doesn't matter how close the soles of your feet are to your body, or how low your knees are to the ground. Wherever you are, you're opening yourself up. If you would like some extra love or extra push, you can gently place your arms on your knees or on your thighs and gently push down.
bring your knees together, maybe even using your arms to gently bring them back together. And bring your knees into your chest, arms wrapped around your knees. Gently move from side to side, back and forth, or even do little circles, giving yourself a nice lower back massage. And whenever you're ready to find stillness, bring your arms out to the side in a T position. And lower your legs over to the right side of your body for supine twist. And rotate your neck and your gaze over to the left side. On your next inhale, bring your knees back to the center and then gently roll them over to the left side. Your gaze goes over to the right. On your next inhale, bring your knees back into the center and wrap your arms around your knees and give yourself the tightest hug. And when you can't hug yourself anymore, just lay yourself out long on the mat, flat. Wherever your arms feel most comfortable, maybe that's on your heart, your stomach, or right alongside your body, preparing for deep rest. Gently close your eyes if that's comfortable. Savasana.
keeping ourselves open and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, no matter what, is a sign that we trust ourselves and that we trust in life. Gently start to bring movement back into your body. Maybe start to wiggle your toes, bring out your wrists and your ankles. And just like if you've woken up from a really nice nap, maybe even stretch out long. And when you're ready, press yourself up into a seated position your eyes closed. Bring your hands to your heart center. And we'll take three unifying breaths together to close out our practice. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Inhale and exhale. Inhale deeply and exhale. And our final one, our deepest. Inhale and exhale. And just gently open your eyes, grab a drink of water, whatever feels good. I'm gonna bring myself closer to you for this part. And I, as I said, am stopped recording.